that's because it, people like to like mesh, mesh them together because they, for whatever reason, mesh so well together. Anyways, oh, we're live, guys. Okay, <laughs> welcome in, guys. Sorry, we were having a little bit of fun talking about JoJo's Bizarre Adventures, but we're getting ready for our game. It's going to be between gold and silver for the RMU teams. I'm excited to see how everyone's going to play out. I am Mad Magical, and I'm joined in by my color caster, Sin. How's it going today? It's going pretty good, thank you. Enjoying uh, the day and looking forward to getting into these games. And, uh, yeah. I mean, it's always going to be a good game when you remove Shogath as the first ban. Honestly, you're not wrong. You need to make sure to get rid of that, otherwise you're going to be in for a really bad time. But Just Kane... remove all the anti-fun champions. So, let's see. We get rid of Cho'Gath. We get Nal rid of Nalzahar. Um, I'd say Janna. Janna's right up there. Janna's an anti-fun champion. Lulu as well. I don't know. If you play Lulu mid, it's kind of fun. Yeah, I mean, Lulu anywhere but support is a fun champion. <laughs> okay, we need Especially to see the... jungle. I was about to say, that's what we need to see. The machine gun jungle Lulu. Come on, guys. Blood raises Lulu jungle. Oh, exactly. God. The, the classic spirit build. So, we see over for the silver side. They're trying to get rid of a lot more meta bands. Trying to get rid of those, like you said, anti-fun yeah. champions. Well, for the gold side, they're kind of focused more on the jungles. The hyper well, carries yeah, that can come in. Like, it seems like they're trying to focus out fun carnage. Get rid of any potential carry junglers. Force them onto something that ha will have less of a carry impact. Something he can't really go 1v9 on. And look at that. That's a third jungle ban just in the first rotation of bans. So they really are putting a lot of priority onto Fun Carnage, trying to make sure he's not having so much fun. I mean, we'll see how much Carnage he can actually create. And with the Janna on his side, it will be significantly easier because uh, Janna, well known for being able to shut down melee assassins. And that's normally what you see from the jungle if you are going for this sort of Kane style. Of course, things like the Rek'Sai as well, very heavily shut down by the Janna. It's important to be able to take that away if you do have a more aggressive oriented jungler. So I'm really curious to see what they try to go for to pair up with the Janna for Fun okay. Carnage. They put a lot of priority and Callista being picked up for Chaos. Not too surprising as we see how strong Callista has been in the current meta. So Janna has a very poor laning phase and she makes up for it by being very strong in the late game, providing a lot of appeal for her team providing a lot of disengage for her team. So if you draft really hard for the early game, like stuff like Callista Thresh, you can try and punish, you can try and snowball off of that early pressure by taking them down. And th this is probably what we're going to see with the Tarek. Although the Tarek can transition into a more ardent sensor supporty build, he still has that early game pressure of being able to make plays. And that is the strength of the pick, being so flexible between the two styles. And honestly, I really love seeing Tarek in the meta and how he's really gotten this resurgence. People kind of dropped playing him for quite some time. And I think paired up with the Callista, having that melee form that he normally has, but being able to throw him right into the midst of the battle is going to be really beneficial. As we see over for Silver, they're really trying to prioritize getting maybe some hyperscaling. The Kogba would make a lot of sense. I mean, the reason, the real reason you like seeing Tarek in the game is the same reason you play the game with eight times zoom as in a magical... Just is this something you know, that you're okay. telling us? Is this yes, something yes. you're telling us? Okay, okay. I, you are not wrong. I have a massive crush on Tark. Who who doesn't, <laughs> though? Let's be honest. Straight, gay, who does not have a crush on Tark? <laughs> who doesn't? Apparently Ezreal, unfortunately, he's got it in for Shivana. But going back <laughs> to the picks in the game, we can see the Shen and the Kog'Mo now locked in. This is really putting uh, the side of freaking Pope on a timer. Because... Uh, this really says that the Kog'Maw is going to be this big late game threat. He's got two massive amounts of shields to put on top of him. Uh, what I would love to see now is like a Galio mid and then a uh, damaging jungler. And then suddenly you've got an unkillable Kog'Maw that's going to go into the late game very happily. And an early game aggressive jungler, the likes of the Rek'Sai, to be able to, be able to get those advantages early on for the Kog'Maw to be able to play onto. And with Syndra being banned away, I wouldn't be surprised if we see something maybe like the Lucian being banned to make it so that they can go for that Galio pick, like you had mentioned. But I'm really curious to see how the gold team is going to be able to adapt to everything. What are they going to try to choose here now that they have just seen that the Orianna is the next ban? So you could happily pick something like the Shen going, we're going to win top... Oh, sorry, Shen, uh, pick the Na rather. <laughs> Because uh, you're going to win top lane into the Shen because he has the range advantage. You've got the hyper procs to be able to push him down the lane. And that is exactly what they do. It's one of the safest top lane picks uh, into a, a melee matchup. Because you can just sit back and farm if you need to. You can chase people down the lane with the uh, frozen mallet plus black cleaver. And you get to chew through front lanes in the late game. Whilst also becoming this big tanky monster. 
So Talia is going to be the lock-in for Blackwater in the mid lane, trying to make it so that he's going to have a little bit more of that roam potential, as opposed to really trying to see if they can buff up the Kogma. I don't think this is a, a good adaptation at all, because what we're seeing is the fact that we've got... Uh, right, let's level 6 all-in bot lane with a Talia plus Shen. There is a Tarek on the opposing side. <laughs> He yes. is just going to hit level 6, ult, and then you can't dive him anymore. So it feels like it's uh, too hard focusing on this one style and not actually being flexible at all with it. Wait a minute. That's a Fizz that got locked in just now. Okay, is, so either is this Fizz, a Fizz or jungle? Shen... Either Fizz or Shen is jungle. Well then, this is a uh, very I mean, interesting uh, sort of pick coming in. So we'll have I mean, to see... I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fond lover of uh, Shen jungle. I've played a fair amount of Shen jungle. And it has worked out for me. So we, we've got to work out because this could have been a uh, a uh, rather uh, um, proxy pick. Yes. So let's figure out. Which would make a lot more sense. But the, right. the final pick was the Azir into the Talia, we assume. Yeah. So we'll, we'll figure that out so that we can tell you. But yes, Azir into Talia makes a lot of sense. Azir getting a lot of buffs recently and being able to do pretty well in shoving back into the Talia. He generally plays like a mid a mid range uh, burst mage now, less focus on being this long range artillery mage that wants to poke people out or going right in and being the playmaker on the front line. It's kind of somewhere in between, and uh, it means that he plays very similarly to a, like a Cassiopeia's range. The only problem is he doesn't have quite the stickiness unless you build uh, the Rawise Crystal Scepter, and until you get to that point, he kind of struggles. So it's all about bullying out the opponent between level 1 and 6. And by the time you get to level 6, you need to be making those big plays. So here, we are going to see if okay, it is it was, it was the Rek'Sai, it looks like. Yeah, so it was a proxy. We kind of figured we were wondering, because that would have been kind of fun, though. See a Fizz yeah. jungle coming in. So and... it's the same jungle we expected, at least. <laughs> yeah, so makes sense. It Really trying to help out the Kogma, keep the Kogma safe. And I... Okay, I was about to say, wait, they have Kogma mid, but it's just because they're out of order right now, yeah. so... That's all it really is. LCS but, order, re re. Exactly. Well, they were in LCS order before they dodged. So, I mean, at least they got half of it right. <laughs> <laughs> so, with with this with this knowledge now in mind, we get to see how the team comps knowledge. kind of look. Knowledge. So honestly, it's really interesting to look at the two sides because we see that split push. We talked about the Nar into the Shen. Nar should be able to win hands down. But that's not what Silver Side is going for. They're going for the team fights. And so what I'm seeing really in terms of uh, Nova Cloak here is we've, we've got the Shen, the uh, Janna, and the Cogmore. That unit is basically, we're fighting for the late game. We are going to make it to the late game, and Cogmore's going to carry us. We've got mm -hmm. Talia for some mid-game team fight pressure. We've got Rek'Sai to get us the early advantages, but that is inherently what it's based around. I would have preferred to see this Talia maybe replaced with a uh, Galio, but of course the Azir would have had a much easier matchup into that. You'd have to have changed up the bands to suit it, and maybe they left something more important up that maybe you really didn't want to give over. So the Talia pick is just something that's going to be fairly safe in the mid lane. Can set up this dive at level 6 in bot lane. As we said, though, the issue is you can't dive a Tarek at level 6. So I almost wonder if we're going to see Blackwater try to go bot lane earlier. Maybe try to scale up really quickly, and the moment he he hits level 6, go for that dive in bot lane. Because you do not want to let Logic get to the Cosmic Gradients and be able to keep Chaos safe at all times. Kick Logic to the curb. <laughs> hey, sometimes that's what you gotta do. You gotta just say, you gotta I do don't... the impossible, fight the invisible, or, or what... fight the power. What was it? Uh, who was it? It was Huhi on. It was Aurelian Soul when he made the level one rotation bot. I mean, Talia <laughs> does have a good, good rotational skill. It's so not that quite Aurelian a... Soul though, is it? No, no, it's not. So, <laughs> but you never know. You never know what's going to happen. But really, I think the main focus has to be on to Mr. Gamians and Fun Carnage. Drexai into Gragas. This is a matchup we have seen for I think the past two years come and go. On and off, definitely, and there's been very different iterations of both of these champions over that time. We saw Rek'Sai initially being a Warrior's Enchantment uh, into a more tanky route or full AD route and, uh, at the start, then transitioned into being this full tank, building a Locket of the Iron Solari every game tank to help out the team. Uh, and nowadays, it's, it's kind of transitioned more into, uh, in competitive play, it's Cinder Hulk into Knight's Vow. In solo queue play and semi-pro slash amateur play, it's 
Warriors enchant, black cleaver, full AD again. You're going all in, trying to kill people. Yeah, I mean, honestly, when you have a Shen and a Janna, you kind of can be facilitated to go for that route as Traxite, couldn't you? I mean, it's a fairly closed question because it's it, you're asking it as if it's a yes or no, but Rek'Sai is a lot more flexible than that. It's a case of how well does the Rek'Sai start getting rolling in the early game? How well does Rek'Sai start to get her team ahead? And if she can uh, get her team ahead, that's where generally she'll find an advantage. But it's got to be based around lanes that can set her up. Because uh, the Rek'Sai generally isn't this, I'm just going to go in flash knock up and then one shot them during that combo you've got to have some sort of setup whether it's the shen landing a flash taunt or for example like a mid lane oriana landing the shockwave you have to have something to get the rex eye rolling you facilitate it with the team not just with the late game scaling you got to think a lot more about the early game well this is where we have to look at the gold side see their picks there's a lot of winning matchups for them that they've drafted nara into shen Callista, tark into kogma and janna they have this ability to be able to put a lot of pressure that might force Carnage to make these risky plays and maybe not be able to get the snowball that he wants. It's going to be quite hard to shut down the Azir. The Azir has a lot of safety in built in his kit with the ability to uh, Shreem a shuffle away, and he's going to be quite happy to do so consistently. Uh, the Shreem a slide uh, was actually <laughs> that's actually the name of that particular move. Uh, Wait, they changed. They changed it. It's no longer. No one refers to it as the Shreema Shuffle anymore. You the know, Shreema Shuffle is the one where you go in and knock them back into the tower. With oh yes, yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. Oh, or knock them into your team. It's the Shreema Slide. Or, so uh, you just you go full drifting, running in the nineties. <laughs> see, I just want to see hear a remix now instead of like ele the electric slide. I want to hear the Shreema Slide. <laughs> Like that was the first thing that came to my mind when you said that, so I'm like, yo, that'd be a that'd be a dope remix right there. Uh, it's it's all about Azir. He, he's just running in the year 2000 BC. It's the new <laughs> way I like to be. Oh no! Ah, the memes. You can only be singed when you do that. Come on, my dude. You, everyone knows that singed ha wants to go fast. I mean, Singed can literally drift. <laughs> that's that's part of the best part of him. They added the passive, which is literally, I am drifting. I love it. People into the memes. It's beautiful. Oh, it's so much fun to play. And then, then you just get everything movement speed, and you're going full Sonic the Hedgehog. So, did you see Impact actually play at Worlds? I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I was at work the next, you know, the next day at five in the morning. So yeah, it's, um, he played it twice. One game he pretty much into the other game he actually did all right. It was pretty <laughs> fun to watch. Yeah, but I need to watch that, those. That's the tale of C9 in general. One game they did, the next game they do pretty well. It was yeah, that is really that that whole series came down to who had the better draft on the game. Yeah, but we aren't at Worlds. We are casting for Robert Morris University as everyone has loaded up onto the rift. We got I the can silver dream side. Magical. You can dream one day, one taste, and maybe maybe these guys will be there. We I'm, don't just gonna, know. I'm just gonna zoom in fully on the banner on the edge of the uh, base. And that's hope. gonna be what I'm gonna look at the entire game. I'm at Worlds, right? <laughs> Anyways, we have the silver side. They are on the blue side, while the gold, they're representing red, saying who can take it from these two teams from Robert Morris. And honestly, right now, the comps, there's a lot of win potential coming in from each side. It just depends which one gets rolling first. We talked about it a little bit in the pregame, but I love the name Steel Ball Run. I'm not, yeah. uh, I, hope it is, I hope it is a direct reference, but uh, it's the alternate timeline to the JoJo's Bizarre Adventures universe. With Johnny still, Joestar still being the paraplegic it. going on the race around America. I still need to watch those. I, For the I, grand prize of $50 million. I would love a grand prize of $50 million. I mean, I'm sure pretty much anybody would. It, I'll pay a few tuition fees at least. Uh, just a couple. I mean, I mean just a <laughs> Yeah, one. just at least in America, it'd probably pay for a couple. It would probably pay for like half a year's rent in California where you are. <laughs> Yeah, don't remind me. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, we gotta cast these games and nothing too out of the ordinary coming in from each side. Though, we have Fun Carnage starting on the blue buff, which is a little bit of a shocker. Usually, Rek'Sai likes to go for the red and try to get an early transition in the game. He could be saying that he knows that the Gragas is gonna be going for the blue buff early and he wants to get an invade in early on. So he could just take this blue and go straight into the enemy jungle from there. We'll see what he opts for. As it looks like that's what that's the case. He's going to head straight towards the uh, the raptors. Yeah, trying to see if he can maybe put a ward down so that he can get a little bit of vision. Wants to be able to spot out Mr. Yam Yam's pathing. 
What? I think he's gonna, I think he's assuming that uh, Grog is just gonna take the Raptors before he goes to the red buff, so it gives him time to be able to take red first. Which is a nice adaptation, because it means he's gonna have the full time to go back and clear his own jungle, without Grog really being able to invade. Oh, but look at this, Grog is going right over that ward that was placed down by Fun Carnage, who smites it away, he's able to get it, so he's gonna be able to fight a little bit with Mr. Yam Yams, the red buff, making it so the that Grog is doesn't wanna... I, I honestly love saying that name, Mr. Yam Yams. <laughs> I, I noticed. It's, it's so much fun to say. Oh, I love names like that. Anyways, so he wasn't in too much of a danger, and we saw that his lanes were pretty much even, holding in Pineapple in the mid lane, as well as holding in Edwin in top lane. I don't think he was in too much of a threat. You normally find in these sort of games, you find people with the best names, but Pineapple Nuke going very yeah, low. Yeah, he might go down. The auto attack gets Ooh. the barrier out of him. Pineapple Nuke's got to be so careful. He doesn't want to be bikini bottomed in the mid lane already with the first blood for Blackwater. And this is something we have to talk about is, is if the potential for Talia gets a first blood, the rotational plays that are going to be able to be made much sooner. I mean, I, I Captain, you got to agree with that because the ability for... Uh, Talia, once she starts to get rolling to be able to get that uh, early Lost Chapter, start pushing out the waves, can be devastating. But in the bot lane now, Chaos <sighs> going incredibly low as well. This is... Oh man, is this... look at Pineapple! What <laughs> look how low! Talking about in terms of winning lanes? I, I didn't... You, you don't usually pair up Kogma and Janna into winning lanes. Yeah, generally, Janna has uh, a lot of losing lanes, but she what she likes is in the late game. As, yeah. Um, Fun Carnage just turns up to the top lane to say, uh, hi, nah. <laughs> well, wouldn't he be like, Gagu Maba? Trying to speak Nar's language. Shaba. Yeah, so I, I don't think he'd be saying hi, Nar. Nar wouldn't really understand it. It's like the Maglio, you know? Yeah. It's Moke, the Maglio. He, mm -hmm. he just attempts to mock other people's speech. It's kind of like Stitch in the early phases. Mm hmm. I, I mean, when, when, you, when you look at the skin, Dino Nar, it's, it's, he's fully based on Stitch. Oh, yeah, 100%. It's you a total. Can tell. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Anyway, I was, actually, back, I was, I was reading the... the lore recently. Sorry, I, one moment. It was um, <laughs> something really weird about Nar. That he's actually like, his entire race was nearly wiped out by Lysandra's people, but Anivia decided, no, you're gonna be the one that survives. That's kind of kind of cruel if you think about it. You yeah. hold on to one, his entire race is killed off, but you make him live. I find that more of a torture than just killing him all. I mean, he seems pretty happy about it. This is true. Uh, maybe, maybe you Nar really you're didn't. fine, and you just have to say you're fine because you can't get into it. But really, he's dead inside. <laughs> 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 and then again, we can't understand what Nar is saying. How do we know that Damagli like, help, let me out? This is not a dance. I'm dying for help. I'm screaming for help. Please, won't you please let me out? I mean, we don't know. <laughs> we don't. We don't know what it means. But exactly. So. But... Going back, going back into the game, that we could actually see that Cogwall uh, has been engaged on slightly. We see this happening, and this is going to continue happening every time the Callista and the Tarek want to go aggressive, unless they can go for a full all-in. Is Janna just charges the tornado? Suddenly they have to back off because the tornado I... one does a surprising amount of damage, and two gives Cogwall the time to supply more than enough damage in return. But it was really Blackwater. He went over a ward. He wants to get these roams off really quickly into that bot lane. We've seen him twice try to path down that way and not, not be able to get anything because the wards being placed by Mr. Gamyan have been incredibly well. But here comes the game coming in, trying to see if they can get onto Chaos. He flashes away, still has the barrier, but he doesn't even pop it as the first blood goes over to Fun Carnage, giving that advantage to Silver Team. This is exactly what we wanted to see early on in the game. He goes in before the level 6 mark. Both of the bot lane is still level 4, he is level 5, so he's able to come in comfortably, get the knockup, get the damage, and now they can move towards this Infernal Drake and get that snowball rolling even faster for the team. So he's able to hit those break points, get the Cogmore to the point where he can 1v9 that 8% quicker. And I think there is also the massive problem of Chaos not using the barrier. He possibly could have survived had he used that going for this engagement. Now in the top lane, a little bit of action coming in from Edwin Ace, trying to see if he can go onto Calzone, but not hitting the wall means that he doesn't really have the best ability of stopping Shen. Of course, Shen having gone back, getting the boots and the cloth armor with not having stayed in lane means he does have the trading advantage consistently. Knowing he has the Doran's uh, shield as well, look at how much health he's already regen. Yeah, it's gonna really give Calzone this massive pressure, and Edwin really needs to try to go for a back soon. He needs to be able to keep up with Shen and continue to apply this pressure. 
he does need to, but the thing is, he's still been falling behind massively in CS regardless, and it shows how well Gay Calzone is playing out this top lane. Mm -hmm. And with the pretty much the split push oriented team comp that you were trying to go for, if it falls behind, it's going to make it so that this Kogba can get to that late game status so the rest of Silver can get up to the team fights that they want to and be able to win unless they're able to get something rolling for one of the lanes. So guys, hit up that straw poll in the chat. Who do you think is going to win? Is it going to be Team Blackwater or Team Pineapple? I'm loving <laughs> these names. I know, these names are so much fun. I still I still am going to put the vote in for the best name for Mr. Gamyams, personally. I know I mean, you like I, I always I always say that my favorite name is the one I saw years ago fizz on my Jace. Well, no, no, no. we got to go by this game. That is an amazing name. <laughs> yeah, I, you've told me about that one. That one's a absolutely brilliant one. It's, so. it's the guy was a fizz and Jace mean. How can you not love it as well? It was perfect. Oh, that's even better when you actually made yeah. the champions. Oh, it makes it so good. Yeah, he, he was dedicated to the memes. Hey, you know what? I uh, I too. Love my memes, as you can all tell. You tip your fedora <laughs> to that man. Mm -hmm. for his Actually, memes. I don't have a fedora. I have a top hat. Or I mean, it's it's steampunk is the new milady. So yeah, well, hold on Ooh. just a second, guys. Here comes the teleport play. They're trying to go for more, but the team is going to go on This the is the party. Play, but they're able to blow up from carnage. There goes steel ball run. He's out of there. Gate helps him. Under the tower, they're trying to go for more, but look at the damage coming in from Blackwater. Almost able to blow up logic. Oh. The rest of gold has to run away, but in the front line, chaos. Pineapple nuke. They're trying to see if they can zone away. They don't want to lose anything from that great play coming in from Gold Team. Blackwater so close to being able to clean up that fight, but it ends up being Pineapple zoning him away long enough. And Blackwater out for shield. Ooh. I don't know what he was doing there. He went way too far forward. Luckily, Rick was able to give him the shield to keep him alive, but he was bursted down by Pineapple Nuke. And this is insane coming from an Azir who's only sitting on an amplifying tome and a Doran's Reek. This is the play they needed to get tempo back in their favor. We saw the fact that top lane was falling behind. Bot lane had already died. And now they're managing to go for this tower dive, trying to finish off the shank. Yeah, this is with the Cosmic Radiance, but it was all the damage going on to Chaos. Here's Fun Carnage, only able to get the knockup onto Logic. They can get it with Kogma there for the damage to return. A one-for-one -one trade, messy dive coming in from Gold Side. But still, nonetheless, they got a lot of damage, and Edwin gets a lot of free time in the top lane. And it's not really actually provided all that much for Edwin. He tried to set up a freeze. It kind of failed, so now it's ended up being a huge stacked wave collapsing onto this tower. And Shen's just going to TP in and pick it all back up. But still, getting the TP out of Calzone makes it so that when he does have the Stain United, it's not going to be as impactful if he were to have both. But regardless, if they, this had been a freeze setup, they could have denied Shen so much of the pressure. Had Very Mr. True. Yams turn up to the top lane and get a kill on him fairly easily because he'd been forced out of position in his lane. Instead, what we're seeing is him able to pick up another happy 10 CS, go up even more of a lead over the Gnar, and then uh, he's just going to be laughing because he didn't lose all that much in the bot lane trade. He, he died, of course. But other than that, his lane has not really been impacted. It's very true. And honestly, if you're Edwin Ace, you're not having that great of a matchup into a Shen as Nar. Things aren't looking so good for the future of this game. You really need to make sure that the split pusher can do his job, can beat the Shen. Because if the Shen is doing well in the side lane, as well as able to help out the team, you as an R, you're feeling really out of place. You've got to ha try and catch up because we know Doc can work fairly well within an economy build. But if the Shen is that far ahead of you, it becomes that much harder for Blackwater. Ooh. Pineapple Nuke, he's dropping the bombs here. That was absolutely absurd, the amount of damage he just did. And the, uh, the soldiers come in for the Mexican wave. <laughs> knock Blackwater right out from under his tower and it's going to be the, a big chunk of damage off of this mid lane tower but not much more than that. It's another kill for Pineapple Nuke that we said once the, uh, Zia starts snowballing ahead it can be a devastating threat and that seems to be getting closer and this closer. This is bot lane. They get the exhaust but Chaos, he's got to be careful. He wants to get the 
ends, but with the monsoon, it's just knocking him back. Here comes the cosmic radiance. They blow him up with their end stacks just to keep chaos safe. For the oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Surprise, not gonna do its job. Here is the Stand United, but it's stopped by so Edwin. Cool. And look at this, Jenna might go down. They're not gonna be able to get the alley out from downtown. Rick's trying to see if he can get away. Barely gonna be able to make it under the tower as Calzone and Edwin continue to fight in this top lane. Nar doing a great job to disengage and make it so that they didn't lose anything further. Edwin denying the Stand United that was so crucial to being able to make sure they didn't lose anything on that play. They sit up 1.5k in gold, but they are still down that Infernal Drake. They're still down a lot of tower damage. They need the time to be able to make this up in the bot lane. Oh, and Blackwater and Fun Carnage, they overstayed their welcome in, giving a killing spree over to Pineapple Surprise. Edwin, he also might be able to get a return kill in this top lane. He's got to be careful. Meganar just coming up to be able to tank the tower. But all in all, Silver, they're looking like they're having a really rough time, even though they had a really good early game with the first tower falling over to gold. Oh, getting the blade, blade of the Rune King so close to that Callista is going to be definitely important for her. That first item spike before the Cogmore gets to the point where he has that Gwinsu's Rage Blade. It's definitely a really uh, good situation to be in. This is really awkward for the Cogmore as well. Look at his item builds right now. He's got the pickaxe and he's got the blasting one. What you want to have is the pickaxe plus the recurve bow because uh, it's so awkward to buy the blasting one when it really doesn't provide all that much what it does provide is a little bit of bonus damage in those extended trades because you get the uh, bonus damage on your w but um, pineapple oh has to uh, just uh soldier and drag away hey he, get, he gets the electric sl slide out of there <laughs> not, gonna, not gonna have to worry about that today but still the fact that he was able to get the tower not lose yeah. his life this is giving so much Big exactly. swing of gold for his team, exactly, yeah. And uh, going back to the Cogmo quickly, though, it's it's where you want to be is pickaxe and plus recurve bow. And then you want to stay in lane until you can instantly buy the Gwinsu's Rage Blade. Because it's so awkward to sit on the Blasting Wand. And it, just... it, feels, it feels so bad because it doesn't provide enough for you in team fights. And when you're fighting into somebody who's just come back with, say, uh, Build Water Cutlass, you might as well have nothing. And that's where I wanted wanted to stress heavily, is we see completed items coming in for Gold Team. The Ardent Sensor, the Blade of the Ruin King, the Morella Namicon, all completed. They're gonna have a lot more pressure in any team fights unless we can see Silver being able to get these backs, get these items that they desperately need. And now uh, they need to be able to get their, their key items, like as you say, where the uh, problems have come. A little bit that the Janna has slowed down the Arden Sensor massively. Look at that. She built a Sight Stone. This is Ooh. this is disappointing. No one's allowed to build Sight Stone on support. Come on. Yeah, you you, you, you build Arden Sensor first item, mm -hmm. and then you and then you think about getting Sight Stone, then think better of it. Exactly, and you tell your ADC that he just better play better. Yeah. And now Steel Ball Run. He's going to possibly fall here. Look at the damage coming in. Fight. Knocked off the horse just like Johnny Joe Star there. Because he's uh... You and your JoJo memes, I swear. I love him. I love him. Uh, he gets killed at the tower though. That's a, an important point because you're removing part of their major form of weight play. Now it's only Blackwater trying to defend against all of them. And you see what happens. It forces him to blow his flash. Yeah, still no Stand United coming in from Calzone to try to see if they can defend this tower. And with this falling, the third tower given up. Look at the swing of gold. 5,000 in favor of gold. Oh, but Pineapple Nuke almost killed Oh, this. wait a minute. The Forger is not going to be able to get it. Look at that. The wall to deny the kill. They're able to keep him alive. Sure, they lose the tower, but the fact that they're able to keep this Azir safe and sound, not having to worry about it too much, and maybe being able to return it onto sticks. Look at that. Rampage for Pineapple. They're able to get the kills. They're able to get the towers. They should be able to back oh, down oh, here. God, these are some logic, beautiful logic for players. some reason, staying to try and clear the pink ward forces the Gragas ultimate to come out to save his life. But that was beautiful. That was It was perfect. a nice ultimate, but it shouldn't have been needed. That was an overstay from logic. These these are the kind of things that can be punished if the game goes on. And, uh, like, the cooldowns have been wasted now. Can that be punished? And it's these issues that continue to happen. But Pineapple Nuke staying alive again in that fight, and one of the reasons Azir came back in the meta is because of the Arden Sensor being able to pot on top of him. We see, we'll see once he comes to the later stages of the game, that massive amount of attack speed he'll have will be so crucial. 
Calzone went for the TM at build on the Shen. I understand it. He's trying to make sure that he can it's constantly the push. Build. Yeah, it's. But the problem with it is he hasn't been really winning in these side lanes. And even with the push, we've seen so much coming in that just abuses the fact that Shen isn't a part of these team fights quick enough. So the way it works in the setup is he wants to be able to push the wave hard so he doesn't take much poke from the Gnar. He wants to be able to push the wave in and back off. It's not necessarily mm. to do with, I'm pushing the wave to deny Gnar CS. It's, I'm pushing the wave so Gnar doesn't have enough time to be able to fight me. And hopefully he's going to work out for them. We really have to see how these team fights are going to be, though, because that is honestly the only way I can possibly see Silver getting back into this game. Definitely kind of come off the back of the late game that we've seen so many times in this meta. The late game. Oh, and what? That's a taunt, but it pushes Fawn Carnage right back into oh, the nice. fight. So many heals. Logic, he's in the thick of it. He's got to be careful. They're able to get. Radiant's only going to be able to get Pineapple Nuke alive for now. They trade the jungle for the support. But an even trade is going to be enough for Silver. The one for one ends up being. Uh, at least good for them because they trade the jungler for the support. Support's less crucial, remember clearly. And now that uh, we see that Logic has this Arden sensor built, he's going to be able to spread that uh, extra attack speed and on hit damage to the extra uh, to the bonus members. So he can actually put it on Nar, uh, the Callista, and the uh, Zer all at the same time. And all three of those being able to chunk through people that quickly and still have the life steal. That's absolutely disgusting. Honestly, he did the build right. Logic went straight for the Arden sensor, deciding to get yes, the. He, the side, he got the side stone second. The second, he was just like, no, 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 I need to make sure that I can buff up Azir and Callista. I need to make sure I do my job, and it's it's not 721 <laughs> yet. 721s where the Arden sensor nerfs are coming. Uh it's gonna feel good as a support guy who likes to play the more mage supports like myself. Um, I will be happy. supports like Blitzcrank, if that's what you mean. No, no, no. Blitzcrank is a mid laner. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. So, anyway, this, the way the rest of the uh, snowball this game has been so clean since that bot lane dive earlier on. They made, uh, they made the overextension on that particular play, but using the gold lead they managed to accrue overall, they've managed to consistently get uh, plays using the Azir in the right positions. People rarely ever getting caught out. It means that even when they are at risk, they can play make their way out of it with this massive gold lead now. And then I did mention this just a few minutes ago, but this game really is already feeling out of control for the Silver team. It looks like there's no true path for them to get back in unless there are some severe mistakes coming in from gold. With these two dragons now, it's going to be significantly easier for them to take that Baron as it spawns very shortly. And, uh, be able to try and utilize that to be able to close the game out from there because we see that they need to close this one out before the late game comes. And there's always that ticking time bomb. And if the Janna can uh, stop enough team fights, dissuade enough engages to be able to get their team to the late game, then she's succeeded. And that's exactly what uh, we, the pineapple, uh, Team Pineapple is trying to avoid. They really do need to avoid that because Janna can be quite annoying when it gets to that late game, especially if they're able to keep Steel Ball Run alive. He is the win condition at this point. But now I want to turn our attention to something that is lacking from Team Pineapple, where they don't have that great of a vision control around this objective. It's kind of been, uh, everybody is kind of a battle ward on the map where everybody is pushing so aggressively, invading so hard that if they need vision, it's gonna be somebody spotting out the opponent rather than it being needed to be spotted on a ward and that's a really odd way to uh, play but it's been mm -hmm. working out for them thus far and now we see them just fighting over some vision control in the opposing jungle they don't necessarily need it they can just can go back to pushing the wave push the wave in then walk into the jungle clear out the pink wards and this just goes on and on whoever has control of the wave has control of the pressure oh and that could have been a really nice pick on the pineapple they got a lot of damage onto him it might even force a recall as he already used that tower to make sure that there's no potential for the engage coming in from Fun Carnage. Now Shendo fighting the Gnar and top lane. Oh, wow, Fun Carnage. I'm not sure you wanted to go into that. That was uh, an interesting move. The flash coming in from Mr. Game Yams only to throw the barrel. 
Sadly, not like how it used to be where it was an instantaneous cast if you were able to get in a certain range. That was changed quite, quite some time ago. In Grog's old age, his throwing arm isn't quite as good, but Siege oh, isn't quite as good what it used to be as he gets completely destroyed. Yes, but they're able to get the kill on to Steel Ball Run. He's the most impactful member. Rick's going to be engaged on by Pineapple Nick at the He's able oh. to pick him up. Getting rid you of that the attack streak there. It was so big. Oh, as Chaos getting caught out now as well. Yeah, this is just skirmishing going all across the map. The problem for Blackwater was he wasn't able to burst down Chaos, but there is no Cosmic Radiance. If he wants to go for more, but he's got to be careful. Fate's Call going to be able to knock him off. There goes Pineapple getting another kill. They sacrifice the logic in the midst. Chaos and Pineapple able to get out. That's the free oh. secret to get the double kill over for Fun Carnage. But look at how much they lost with trying to go for this place. It's a little bit too late because they lost that tier two in the mid lane. And now all from gold are able to go back and spend the gold they just accrued. It's only a matter of time before the game gets blown open or wide in a team fight. And though it's been looking like it will be Team Pineapple for a majority of these last 10 minutes it's starting to look like the rex side could perform perform a huge engage and be able to find something for the team to follow up on and that's something to talk about a little bit is the itemization coming in from everyone we look at fun carnage he went for the warriors enchant but he's going for that tanky pack probably going to go for that uh Randuin's omen next try to lower a lot of the damage coming in from chaos and make it so that if he does opt to go for the crit path that he's not going to be able to do quite as much Try and mitigate as much damage as possible as you say. But at the same time, it does limit the damage that Rek'Sai will have. And we said that they limp they do not have that many damage sources as it is. Because the Cogmore is so reliant on the late game. Natalia is quite conditional as damage. It's gonna be definitely awkward for them to be able to put damage onto the backline. That's crucially where they need to be damaging. Seems that gold want to try to position around this Baron. They have great objective securing potential with Chaos on Callista. The Ren stacks it. She's able to pile those up on a Baron far, far superior to that of a Smite. But great call coming in from Silver. They see the rotations coming in from gold. Make sure to get at least some gold back in their pockets. That's just to do with not having the wave push when they start moving towards the Baron. You need to have the wave push deep and then back off to pick up the wave and have this back and forth with the wave. If you let them push the wave in deep, that's where they can start contesting you, force you to act differently, and it's the failure to react normally that uh, is spotted out rather easily. Man, Calzone took a massive chunk of damage there. He doesn't have any MR, so Pineapple shredding through the health bar of this supposed tank to make it really difficult to defend this tower. Oh, the poke that comes out from the Azir, I believe the changes that were made to him. Uh, if you remember before, if you summoned his soldier underneath an enemy tower, it would go away very quickly, but now it gets the full uh, the full time underneath the enemy tower, and he's able to poke out people so much more effectively on these sieges. This is, all, I think that's one of the many reasons why Azir is now coming back into the meta. People were wondering if he was going to get that rework, but I think these changes have done him justice. Making him this a is little... his rework, yeah. Yeah, I think this is his rework, and it's doing a great job in keeping his identity. I mean, it's it's completely ruined the thematic of what I wanted for Azir, but basically I... what I wanted from, from Azir is them to make two different champions. One that has the Sharima Shuffle, and one of them that fits the I am the Emperor and I summon my soldiers thematic. Well, I think they're going to do that with Swain, but Rix gets himself caught out. Blackwater forced to flash away. Oh, not flash, cleanse away. K. Kelson, he used that Stahini United, wanted to see if he could get in, but mostly just wanted to keep Blackwater alive. Find Carnage, somehow it's got himself behind the rest of gold. Not sure they want to really go for this fight, though, because Nar is wailing on the inhibitor towers. Mr. Yamyams, he decides to jump on Steel Ball Run, getting a little bit of Ooh, damage, but they're able to poke him down. Gotta be careful, because here comes Pineapple Nuke. Look at the damage he's able to get. It's a heal out of Cog by trying to keep him keep him alive, keep him safe. Edwin Ace is going to stay alive himself. Able to get a lot of chip damage onto that inhibitor, but the rest of his team is able to focus down this mid inhibitor themselves. Zit is just able to set up this poke so easily. He's able to stop members being able to engage. So oh man! What an engage coming in from Pineapple. They had the cosmic wall, forcing the flash out of Tark, keeping him safe. They're able to trade a jungler for a mid laner, but with the tower down to nearly half health, the rest of gold, you want to go for it, but Silver is doing a fantastic job at holding down the line. 
Ends up being just Pineapple Nuke going down, but he gets one for it. Uh, although he doesn't get what he wanted, which was that mid lane tower, they do end up getting the kills. And he's still getting more fed. He's still getting to these breakpoints where we know he can uh, be this massive threat. But the problem is, they're just buying time for the Cogmore. He's already got two items. How long is it before he can start shredding through Mr. Yams like he's nothing? We already saw that pretty much from the last fight. Mr. Yams was trying to go for this hard engage, but as he was getting kited around, Steel Ball Run was doing massive amounts of damage. Sure, not able to completely obliterate him, but you gotta imagine with just a couple more items, he's gonna be able to. We gotta remember that they have a Gnar. This isn't a true tank where he's gonna take absolutely zero damage. He has no armor at the minute. <laughs> Yeah, Nard's gonna... I don't think Edwin's gonna have a fun time when he actually goes for these engages, especially if they're not able to lock down Cogma. You need to see maybe a big Nar ultimate onto the back lane to be able to catch these people out. And honestly, that's what we need to see. We need to see some Haunter level plays coming in from Gold. Oh, they need God, to make sure... <laughs> hey, that was one of the few good things that TSM did this year at Worlds. I wanted Flash Wolves <laughs> to win, though. I did too. I had I did them too. I had them first in the group in my pick em. I did too. I did too. Don't worry, that, that whole group um, uh, group messed my standings up completely. When you, you know what something's wrong when the most notable person uh, the, the of all the notable people, the person with the highest points <laughs> in the current pick is pulse. Yeah. Yeah, if there's the Chinese play wrong. by play pulse, well China play by play rather than Chinese. The LPL. Yes. There you go. I got you. You got so my now... Alright, well, this is a death push set up by gold. They want to get this, but look at this minion wave that has been started in the bot lane by Calzone. It may force Edwin to have to answer, otherwise they might lose a tower or a lot of damage onto it. It's uh, really just trying to get the wave in the right position to be able to bait this Baron properly. We've said about it this before but they aren't utilizing it correctly, and this is causing them to have to back away from the Baron far too easily. They just have them having wasted time. As we said, that's all that uh, Team Steel Ball Run wants to do. They, re they really need to bait it out. They're trying to make it so that they can get to this late game power spike for Kogba and literally just be a peel for the Kogba comp, the whole yeah. Juggermaw comp that we have seen time and time again. There's a reason why teams would love to fall back onto it. It's that they've just been baiting them out the entire time, holding on to this uh, deficit because they know eventually they'll have uh, they'll have the tools to be able to come back in the game. It's like uh, next you'll say I was only pretending to be retarded. <laughs> Feels bad, man. Feels bad. But this is where Gold decided to make their stand. They want to go for the Baron. They have the ability, but Chaos he decided to attack that ward and it pretty much pinged out that they're going for it but with the list are they able to run that down here comes the teleport in from edwin the cosmic radiance the righteous glory trying to get that invulnerability from mr game they're going to be able to catch out fun parties but look at this rich in the back line have to use the monsoon just to keep himself alive but he falls down way too quickly now they're turning their attention to steel ball run that is going to be a Azir getting it down as they get the double kill over for calista gate has got nowhere to go Azir going in to finish off the fourth kill. Only Fun Carnage is going to be able to survive this with the Baron. You've got to imagine that this is going to be the end for Gold. Pineapple Nuke on the Thought Patrol removes that Eagle support from the game right at the start of the fight. And that secures them as easily as there's no way to disengage. There's no way to stop the team from just playing front to back completely. And even with the Spirit's Refuge, that doesn't stop the soldier's damage. Oh, and look at this pineapple. He wanted to go in for one final kill. Pad that KDA. But Silver, they're going to lose here today. Gold, they finally figure out what they need to do. They make the play and they win the game. Ends up being off of the back of that Azir mid lane. A huge <laughs> victory comes out. He play, made, he play made where he needed to. Even though Fun Carnage found a nice early game advantage for himself, couldn't take it any further. And honestly, we have to look at this and kind of dissect what went wrong for Silver. What could they have possibly done in order to make this game not get so snowballed out of their control? Well, we saw the fact that the uh, bot lane was a bit too passive. And they needed some more proactivity in their team because they had wait until level 6 and then do something bot lane. But at the same time, they did that into a Tarak. They needed some kind of adaptation where they could 
perhaps try and dive the Nar in the top lane, perhaps try and play around the mid lane, but they didn't. They still kept trying to play around the bot lane and they got punished hard for it when the engagers turned around and they died. Yeah, so in the end, it was just too much for Silver to be able to That's do anything much, about man. That's too much, unfortunately. So we're going to throw it over to a quick little break, get ready for the next set of games. So guys, stick around. We'll be right back.
welcome back in we are live at you for some more games we're going to be back in with silver and gold they're going to be swapping sides this time so gold they're going to be on the blue side with silver hitting the red as the bands looking about the same definitely just swap sides for now we'll see if any of the crucial bands do switch sides for example the sejuani was banned on red side last game we'll see if the, uh that is going to be another ban uh, from Team Pineapple, or if it's going to be switched over, potentially even left up for first pick. Could be very interesting getting that on to Mr. Yam Yams. He played very valiantly on the Gragas, so nice tank in his hand. So if they want to go for the side one, he definitely an option. But Azir going to be the ban aimed at Pineapple. So it's going to be a little bit of a switch up coming in from gold. With the Azir banned, we can, we'll have to see what Pineapple does opt for. As he did actually blind pick of that Azir in the last game. Yeah, yeah, he did. No, did he? I thought he was last pick. No, he did not yeah, have that yeah, last yeah. pick, I don't think. Yeah, yeah, it, it was last oh, pick. Oh, he did. Yes, yeah. you are correct. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm pretty yeah. sure he picked that into the Talia. I wonder why Azir would get banned, though. It's just, it seems so strange to ban a champion that just popped off and destroyed your <laughs> entire team. Yeah, I know, right? But this is something that's interesting. Locking in first rotation, Alistar. Uh, <laughs> can you make a little bit of sense for this for me? Uh, can you just lock in Janna and go goodbye, Alistair? You could. You definitely could. That is a great counter to the Alistar matchup, and I almost wonder if this is a hint as to what Mr. Gamiums is going to play, or maybe have well, Pineapple Alistair, someone. Huh? Alistair's just picked as a very good counter to Rakan right now. Right, so that's what's kind of interesting about it, and this is... Okay, that's a thrash. <laughs> is this the Samsung bot lane? It is. It's the Samsung white bot lane right here. Yeah, I, I, okay, so this is an interesting change coming in. So we do need to talk about how this isn't the world's patch. This is quite after it. And Arden Sensor has been nerfed twice. It's going to get its third nerf coming in next patch. So it's not quite as oppressive as it once was. Neither is Janna, where she was so strong and must pick in every game. Where yeah, this I mean, time around, sense has gone from yeah, it's it's gone from by ardent sensor to by ardent sensor. Yeah, well, yeah, next patch it really will be. No one's really gonna want to touch that anymore. But it's gonna be the grog is locked in for Mr. Game Yams once again with chaos going onto the Calista. I actually love the Calista with the Alistar combination, and maybe its laning phase is a little bit weaker. But this indication that they're trying to go for a team comp fight this time around, oh, as opposed to what they did last time, and now. Play. That is a blind cled for Calzo and a little bit of confidence coming after game one. You have to ban Fiora. Fiora is a hard counter to cled. Yeah, we'll see what's going to come in for Team Gold. If they're going to really, I know Team Gold, Team Silver, if they're going to really try to add it and change to this, if they want to get rid of Fiora. Otherwise, we don't know if Edwin can actually play Fiora and there is not even going to be a touch onto that with Corky and Oriana both being banned away. And then Jarvan going to be hitting the bench over for gold. I want Edwin to pull it out. It would be rather good to see the Fiora come out in this game, as it does do so well into it, and you can create a unit if you have Gragas and Alistair that can so effectively disengage if anybody wants to come towards it, that you can just go, okay, we have a three-man unit that sits mid and a split-pushing Fiora. What are you going to do about it? It's going to be really diff. Okay, that has to be a proxy Twitch check. jungle. Well, that is also possible. It didn't really... From the mind, but we did see the last time around they had a proxy pick, so we're gonna put a timeout on that. We're gonna wait to see what that is before we actually start Twitch divulging jungle. into it. It is possible. Twitch jungle is a thing that comes out every now and then, but without an ardent censored user, it makes it a little bit questionable whether they want to go for this double AD carry sort of comp, or if they want to make it so that that is a proxy pick and they have something else in the mid lane or jungle for the silver team. Okay, so unless Shen times his Spirit's Refuge perfectly, Kled beats the crap out of him. Yeah, very strange pick for Edwin. Not quite sure yeah, you got why he wanted to go. You go Black Cleaver Titanic, and then he has no time to do anything. He just loses. It's going to be a Cassiopeia for the mid lane. Going to be blind in two by water, and that is Karma. That is a Karma mid. Yep, Karma mid, uh, Twitch jungle, Kled top. There it is. That's that Ardent Sensor user that we were talking about. If you're going to go, for, at least before Ardent Sensor gets nerfed, you need someone who's going to be able to utilize that effectiveness from the item. 
Lead mid, cast, uh, karma top. Let's go. <laughs> Get the tank. It never die, karma. Tank karma. Yep. Here we go. Into Shen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a... No, no fun times for Shen. Here we go. That would actually be really interesting. But then again, Cassiopeia Cled matchup would... uh, That that would be really difficult, and I feel like Blackwater would have to go really hard really quickly before Pineapple's able to get to level 2. I don't think that would go so well. Not really, uh, but the thing is, whether we see it in the mid lane, it's just going to be a safe matchup that doesn't really lose any lanes. It's just going to spam that RQ. And then... uh. Really, just make it a completely uninteractive laning phase. <laughs> yeah, well, see how I play Clay's. You have to play Kled like his actual lore says, and you always have to go into battle regardless. There's no I mean, matter what. Is there any on. other way to play Kled? No, there is not. Any other way is a lie. And it's uh, someone trying to uh, pretend to be Kled. In reality, they're just a Teemo in disguise. Ah. Oh, These are facts. Yeah. These are facts. You can look well, up the Well, we know that Singed is just a B in disguise. Yeah, exactly. Or or is he a race car in disguise? I'm not sure either. Either way, he's one of the two. Or is he a Transformer? Because, you know, Bumblebee... The, the... No, no. The, the, the new Transformer is Mecha Rangar, the new skin that's been announced. <laughs> oh, yeah. But he doesn't go very fast, though. He's not very fast. He's literally a tum. He turns into the Tumblr from uh, Batman. Yeah, but that, that doesn't mean that he goes fast. I mean, I, at least with Scion, it makes sense that he turns into a train. You gotta go fast. Yeah, I know you do. That's why you lock in uh, Sin just any time you can. Doesn't well, matter speaking, which lane. You just speaking go. Speaking of going fast, something comes to mind that's going the opposite. The Twitch presents a uh, live stream of uh, Yu Gi Oh! right now, where they're having an ad break every three minutes. Literally, Are you serious? They, yeah, yeah. Um, they do an ad break, then the credits, then another ad break immediately after the credits. Wow, that's a that's not that's not a good thing. No, but, and then they do the opening, then another ad break at the end of the opening. Hmm. hmm. Good thing I'm not. I haven't even decided to watch that. So, anyways, it's been I, like it, if the thing is, it's been like a day, and they've only got through roughly twenty episodes. Lol. But but then I I know that it's definitely disheartening and hurt, hurts to hear about. But I want to talk about these teams just a little bit, just a wee little bit, because a meta we saw picked up for quite some time was going for the barrier for the AD carries with the heal being on the support, but because we have two no, playmaking it's supports. No, supports. What are you it's, talking about? That's what I was about to say. You now we have the playmaking. For the, you only go for the heal supports if, if you, you have, have Ardent Sensors. If you have items that provide bonus healing. Like the Ardent Sensor. Or, and you're, or you're a toxic solo Q ADC named Prototype and you go exhaust every game. Hey, he hey, he somehow wins with that. So, I will I mean, say that he, he's also incredibly toxic. Well, I don't know. I've never talked to the guy, so I'm not gonna badmouth someone I've never talked to. Ugh. But I mean, anyways, that's, that's the boring way to live life. Nah, that's that's the way I live life because I don't I don't know people. I don't care about them. What do you, what are you doing? Being a nice person over here, magical. I'm not being a nice person. I'm just saying that I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> that their their choices in life are not mine until they affect mine that's the only time i'll actually care but anyways going back to this we have to talk about this and i know i know you're starting to get tired over there in the uk but we need to talk about league of legos i right, legend legos league of legos okay league of, league of legos so what you gotta do is you gotta take the red block uh-huh and you put it on the blue block there you got the double buffs my but why would you put the red block on the blue buff what block why, why wouldn't you do it the other way because you go red first into blue but what if I want to? What if I'm like, I don't know, like a Sejuani, and I need the mana? Then why are you playing Sejuani? Because I, because I want to do a lot of AP damage with my ult. Oh God! <laughs> uh, you make my brain hurt, magical. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is how this is how you uh, you you can tilt the color, guys. You're, you're the kind of guy who there. says AP Scion's still a thing. Uh, it hurts. That's just cruel, Sin. You gotta remind me of the good times. Well, your Q had a 1.0 scaling AP ratio with a 2 second stun at level 1. You oh, gotta God. remind me of the good times, Sin! <laughs> I miss those so days. Is this gonna be one of the famous moments where Callista just decides to kill her support in the middle of the lane at level 2? <laughs> 
this is definitely possible. Troll logic a little bit, and then have Rex be able to get a nice easy hook on the dead Alistar. Oh, Feels God. bad, man. <laughs> yeah, it's without the black spear being used though. That's this is. Oh wait, Shen's going for a cloth armor four pot start. Yeah, that's not going to be a good time for Edwin, if you no. ask me. So it's I not quite the triple reju bead start like you'd go for Shen into Rumble, but still. Yeah, it's going to make it really hard. We're going to have to keep our eyes on how aggressive Calzone goes into this matchup. On Kled, he really should be trying to punish Edwin, but I think that's going to be a lot on to how fun Carnage plays in this jungle on the jungle Twitch. This is the third time I've casted a jungle Twitch in the past week. Really? I have yeah. yet to cast one. I've been wondering where and when it's going to be busted out after seeing the Ezreal. I'm like, okay, this means Twitch is probably going to come back soon. I've not seen it. I've not seen it for like a year, and then suddenly I've seen it three times in the past week. The last time they can do it for Arden Sensor's rip, rip and pa pasta. Rip and pepperoons. Mm hmm. Yeah. G gotta get those pepperonis out, guys. What? With, look at this, Fun Carnage going for a really early kill. Trying to see if they can get Calzone ahead. And this is what we were talking this about, wondering the what they're trying to go for. Do on Twitch. This is the only reason you ever pick Twitch. Woohoo! That is it. It's that first split. This is the given. When you pick Twitch, this is what you do. Mm -hmm. There is no other way to play Twitch jungle. You take a buff, you level two cheese game. That is all. I think that's actually really important because this is what you need to do if you go for the jungle Twitch. You need to get the snowball rolling. Sure, Twitch scales amazingly into the late game, but he has a really weak clear early on. He does indeed. He doesn't really have much AoE, so he's all based around his single target damage with his poison. So he does take a lot of time to be able to clear, so he needs to be able to get those uh, to help snowball his lanes and himself ahead. Uh, what I saw last time I saw this build was uh, he relied so much on the Ardent Sensor that he went uh, Dusk Blade first item in the jungle. Wow, he didn't build, he didn't build any jungle item. And then he went for Runin's Hurricane into Infinity Edge. Didn't even go for the Blood Razor. That's very interesting, actually. I indeed thought so too, but it, it just ends up being that. Oh, look at for this. They're going to go for a lot of aggression onto Chaos that. Fighting off a little bit more than they can chew. Chaos, he's going to be burned down by the poison. Getting the heal out. Doesn't have the barrier that we were talking about. He's got to be careful. With now with the red buff, gets the kill on the Chaos. Second one for Fun Carnage. Already out to a 2-0 lead. Cheese ganks. Well, yeah, he's playing a rat. Of course it's cheese ganks. <laughs> They'll have more holes than my favorite cheese. Exactly. I mean, what, what did you expect when you put, play Twitch Jungle? If you don't expect cheese ganks, then you're clearly not exactly, understanding. Exactly. It's just... It's... This is better than the last time I saw Twitch lately, but... At the same time, these, sh these should be very telegraphed to the opposing laners, and this should not be that easy to find kills. I think it's just a little bit of... Then really over-pushing for the fact that you know Twitch started topside. I think that's just over-aggression coming in from the gold team. Or They're not just, understanding the pick. It is very true, too. Not being practiced against it. Whenever you play, It's kind of like an Ezreal jungle. The reason you see Ezreal so strong in the early game, one, he has pretty good single-target damage, so he's able to take some of those camps so well, but he actually does provide a lot when it comes to going for a gank, getting these early kills. It's the ability to just uh, stick to people with the red buff, and come into the lane and go, okay, you're gonna die. Good for mm -hmm. you. Exactly. And that's what makes it so impactful and makes it so strong. So with these two kills under the pocket of Fun Garnage, I'm excited to see what he goes for for that first back. We'll have to keep our ass on it. He's sitting on a pretty hefty sum of gold at the moment. And I doubt he wants to go for a gank with how low he is right now. And so, really, this is the one problem for Twitch. When you actually go for your full clear, you can't gank afterwards because you're so low from it. Uh, we see, actually, he's gone for the recurve bow early, so this either means first item of Ruins Hurricane, or he's actually going to go for the Blood Razor. Yeah, and look at that. He does have that talisman as well, so I would imagine he's going to go for the Blood Razor, try to get himself a little bit of... You just get Skirmish as Saber. This is true. That is a massive possibility. It's a lot of trading in this top lane, Calzone. Knocked off of Skarl. He's got to be a little bit more careful. Try to see if he can get back onto that mount, but I think he should be pretty fine. Edwin doesn't have that much of a kill potential into him. 
And now, uh, when he gets back on the mount, he's gonna get a big chunk of health back, and it'll be just like he won the trade, essentially, because he hasn't had to blow up potion, and yet, at the same time, he gets back nearly to full HP. Yeah, that's, that's glad for you. But it is, honestly, I, I think a lot of fun, especially with that mount mechanic. That's just me, personally. But now, looking over, we're possibly having another gank coming in from Fun Carnage, but he was spotted out of, on a ward before he was able to get that ambush off. So, now looking, turning our attention away from the gank that just happened, and now to the items coming in. We see Blackwater on this Karma. He's going to go for that Athene's early on. This is generally what you'll see because she won't be impacting the bot lane or the jungle all that much until she hits that one and a half, two item spike. So going for the Athene's first into the Arden Sensor, I imagine. It's going to provide her some a nice amount of sustain in lane, the magic resistance she needs, and then the Arden Sensor can come later. Really can. They're just trying to see if they can scale up for these team fights, then make it so that Fun Carnage and Steel Ball Run are going to be able to do an absolutely absurd amount of damage with that attack speed. But here comes the play. They have the teleport. They want to get the kill onto Clutch. It's going to be answered, but a great lantern to get himself out of there. Both of those teleports have been canceled. Surprised that Edwin didn't go for the Stand United. Yeah, just got to hold off this time, but uh, almost costs his team. And, uh, it's gonna be unfortunately giving the top lane pressure over to the fled. Now we see the mid lane just twitch hovering out of the edge of vision. Ooh. He doesn't really want to go in considering how low he was. It means that Karma does manage to bait out the petrifying, petrifying gaze for free though. That's, I think, gonna be the most important thing. If Fun Carnage is able to go for another gank, but with the bot lane, Ricks being jumped on, the run stacks up there, getting the pull with the damage, is gonna be able to get it with that last auto attack, but Steel Ball Run is gonna be the next focus. Logic down, be careful, getting the heal to keep himself alive. He didn't want to get hit by that uh, built over Peacemaker. Oh, almost called it Ace in the Hole there for some reason. But didn't want to get hit by that, didn't want to get a massive chunk of damage on him. And uh, now with Rix having gone down, it's started to give a little bit of pressure over to Chaos and Logic, and we'll see if it starts to turn into the same as we saw last game with a snowball rolling through bot and mid allows them to take over the game. It's gonna be interesting to see. It was the gold team that is now on the red side here that was able to get that snowball rolling, and they really want that with Fun Carnage. But they have to make sure that they're constantly getting picks and not losing these lanes. If Logic and Chaos are going to be able to uh, get these kills, they're going to get that snowball going in their favor this time around. Uh, see, it's going to take a long time to really uh, get to the late game where we know that Caitlyn can be incredibly efficient, where they've got the uh, double, she uh, double, uh, fiend, uh, double trade, idle, onto Blackwater. It's going to be a long time, really, before we can see that Steel Ball to get rolling. Really going to be important, but they have this great potential when it comes to that late game as well. They have the Siege with the Caitlyn. They even have the great 1v5 potential from Twitch when he gets to that late game. Now, having finished that Skirmisher Saber and the Blood Racer that we were wondering what he was going to go for, he's going to be doing a little bit more damage in these teamfights. Oh, he's talking about damage. This Kled going back in again. Mm -hmm. a big chunk onto Edwin. And that, that is definitely that, uh, what what is that called? The Violent Tendencies? Is that what? Yeah, that's the W. Yeah, the W. That that shred that it has for the max health in it to this tank is going to make it so that Edwin's, even though he's gone for a little bit of armor, isn't going to actually stay that safe. Pop quiz, what's the name of his W? Who's? Let's. I ju just said it. Violent exactly. Tendency. What's the name of his Q? His Q is the best name in the fucking game. <laughs> in the yeah. game is Bear Trap on a Rope. Bear Trap on a Rope. What's the E? Um, I actually don't know. Let's see. The E is Jousting. Yep, like, and the ultimate is Charge with like five R's. Well, you're supposed to say Charge! That's how you're supposed to say it. Or I could avoid sounding like Arnold Schwarzenegger in a bad movie. Yeah, no, you're not, you're not supposed to. If I can't have my old scion with bad Arnold Schwarzenegger quotes, we have to at least do something that sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger. 
Gotta do That's something. It's like a. Do you remember the clip that Riot released where Galio ults up into the sky and then sees yeah. all the old reworks of champions? Yeah. Uh, like both of the Rise up reworks for fist bumping. It may be sad to see that. But now, more aggression in this bot lane. Great lanterns coming in and stopping Logic from going for this dive on a steel ball run with the Ignite having been ticked. These headshots coming in onto Logic. He's got to be careful, doesn't want to go too low and possibly not have a way to fight back because he did use that unbreakable will. And now with that down, he's going to be able to start uh, Yeah, they're going to go for this, but the first tower falling in the top lane, they're going to be able Careful, Rick's taken down by Pineapple Nuke. Next target is going to be Steel Ball Run. He was a little bit too far behind. Here's the charge on to Pineapple Nuke. Ethiopia, they want to turn their attention on the clutch. He's got to be careful. He's under this tower. Even though he has the Karma nearby, they have to be careful when the damage they able to first down logic, but they're gonna lose Calzone, they're gonna lose Blackwater in the end. So two kills going over to Cassiopeia gives the gold team that much more pressure despite having lost the tower in the top lane. Overall, it is the two for four. As Twitch was setting up a mid wave the entire time. I don't think they have enough time to be able to kill this bot lane tower and really punish for it. So the gold still remains about even. Gonna remain even, but Fun Carnage not going to go until he knows the Steel Ball Run and Rakes are in the area of this tower. If he's super low, actually probably is going to fall unless Carnage yeah. is able to do something. Here's the ace in the hole. A little oh. bit too late. They're able to like, back. They didn't land the taunt. Trying to see if they can get a little bit more, but that is going to be the build for PJ. You're getting the kill, the flash with the grab on to Kalissa. Trying to see if he can return it, but I don't think he's going to have the damage even with the heal. Dodging away the slap down from Rex is going to be able to get the shutdown onto Kalissa. Logic just a little bit too late to save his AD carry. And the gold still remains even again. Even though the, uh, uh, even though Chaos goes down, did another trade it's just leading to a back and forth game right now that could go on for quite a while because neither team's uh, eking out significant advantages and both of them have comps that scale fairly well into the late game. So we can, uh, we'll have to see if whether it's going to be the double lady carries, really pressuring out people, being able to uh, bust people at the start of team fights, or whether we're going to see the diving buddies, the Shen plus the Gragas and the Alistair all being able to get on the back line and knock up uh, key members. Yeah, but it also will be a lot on Fun Carnage if he's able to get a nice flank with this Twitch. We saw the damage he was able to do there, but when he got knocked up by Mr. Gamians, they made it so that his impact was mitigated completely. He's going to make sure that he has phenomenal positioning in these team fights. And so what I want to look at now is the Karma, because she has fallen behind in the lane phase, as to be expected when you go for this more utility build. At the same time, closer and closer to that ardent sensor and we'll have to see where she uh, activates that first because she needs to be able to do that aoe e shield onto both twitch and caitlin at the same time to maximize the effectiveness of it otherwise you kind of picked karma when you could have been picking any other ardent sensor champion you might as well have been playing janamid you'd probably get the same result Ooh, and look at this pineapple nuke just burst it down he gets a removed eye of blackwater a little bit of over aggression even with the exhaust wasn't able to stop all that damage coming in from Fire and Carnage. And they're looking to get their own back off, uh, off of the previous game where Pineapple Nuke kind of nuked the oppo all the opposing team with that uh, Azir pick. And now is on a, a different Shariman relic, if you will. <laughs> it's a little bit different, unfortunately, for him. He's not doing quite as well on it. But now I want to turn our attention. We have the Australian lanes happening where the bottom lane has now gone to the top lane with the tower falling. They want to see if Chaos and Logic are going to be able to get the tower here. It's kind of interesting to see that not really turned around by the silver team from Steel Ball Run and Rick trying to see if they can get themselves that bot lane tower and just trade the objectives. Well, with Chaos and Logic getting that bot lane tower first, they're free to rotate here and try and make up for the same uh, push and doing so and getting that top lane tower, getting the uh, two towers to the one because they know on the other side uh, you can't really have the Caitlyn and the uh, Thresh push back that happily into you because it's a really long lane they'll just get collapsed on so easily. And this is a good play coming in from Gold Team. They're able to make that rotation, get themselves this Rift Herald, and despite the fact 
that Pineapple Nuke did lose his flash, trying to avoid a gank from Fun Carnage. He stays alive, and now trying to look to put the pressure in this mid lane, even though the Ardent Sensor has been completed by Blackwater. Still needs to be able to activate in a fight, crucially. It's kind of just going yeah. for another kill in mid. They're trying to see if they can get it. Here comes the Stan United, the Spray and Prey trying to get a look. First down, Pineapple Nuke. Not really much that he can do, even though the Iron Sensor wasn't used properly by Blackwater. They're still able to get the route that they needed to and use that massive amount of damage from Fire and Carnage. Logic is doing his best to try to disengage from this tower falling with the two AD carries in the top side of the map. Just leaving them up there by the set by themselves to keep contesting farm, but Alista is the first to run. I think that has to be. They don't have a tower, so Callista wasn't going to be able to fall back onto anything and doesn't have to worry about Steel Ball Run being able to pick anything up if he roams into that mid lane. Plus, it makes it so that it's a 4v4 fight instead of being a 3v4 that it was prior. So now, uh, we can see the, the, if we look at the gold leads individually, uh, Callista sitting at 800 gold leads of her opponent, but her team is still at a massive disadvantage because uh, the jungle is down 1.3 thousand gold. The top lane is down 1,500 gold. It's uh, made up for the fact that Fled and Twitch are carrying this team. They really have to make sure that they are the carriers, but because if there's a good pick on a Twitch, you know, mitigate a lot of that advantage that the Silver team has, you need to make sure that they're not falling behind. But with that page call not landing onto anybody, and now with the Rift Herald used in the mid lane, the possibility of fight can happen at any moment. The pick on to Logic, trying to see if they can burst him down. He's able to go in with the Curse of the Plus Attack, trying to knock back in the AD carry, trying to see if they can burst him down. Blackwater's full in the fight with the Spray and Prey. Is he going to be able to get the damage that they need on Logic? He's burning down. There it is, the true damage, able to pick up the kill onto Logic. So it's a one for one trade, but the tower falling in favor of the gold team to make them have the advantage. But here comes the charge. They are not done. Pineapple Nuke, you got nowhere you can run. They're going to be able to use the lantern. Try to see if they can get a little bit of a pick on to Edwin, but he's able to stay alive for now with on the carnage bursted down, Ooh. taking the tower shot, disrespecting the damage can come in. And Pineapple Nuke with the fancy feet. Chaos, he wants to see if he can get him a little bit more. The flash from Caitlyn, going to keep him safe for now. Everyone else has to run away, but in the end, it's going to be in favor of Gold Team. Now with a Twitch going down as well, it's, it's ended up being a perfect time for uh, Pineapple to be able to start pushing towards this mid lane tower. So many members low with Blackwater respawning. He can start to set up a team to be able to chase them down. It seems like that's what they want to do. They just want to see if they can bait out Silver Team a little bit, make it so they can't actually gain any momentum from a little bit of an overextension from Gold. But either way, we saw the Gold lead. It was 2,000 just in favor of Gold, of Silver, and now it's even. And so with the Gold lead being so close consistently, it comes down to where the Gold lead is. And we talked about this already with the top lane and the jungle still having such an advantage. It comes down to Twitch's burst at the start of a team fight, or whether it's going to be at the end. Really? Because, uh, he can either be on that cleanup duty, or is he going to be the person engaging? And uh, here I am, it's me. But I think that's going to be a problem. If they're using the Twitch to engage, we saw how squishy he is. If he gets picked off by uh, Gragas, he's going to fall down so quickly. It's not going to really allow anything from the gold and the silver team to be able to do anything because they don't have any true tank. And now with just the uh, bruises, as we, uh, bruises, as we say, of the Kled, it's rather rough to be able to find that big front line of Oh, ooh, look at that. Blackwater bursts it down, but they're able to trade onto Calypta. Twitch able to get out of there. He's got to stay safe. The tower's still up. If they're going to be able to get this pick onto Pineapple oh. with the hook landing, that's going to be the first. Not land the petrifying gaze onto anybody. They got Pineapple Nuke taking way too much damage, and that's yeah. the Twitch that we were talking about. That's ripping apart the team. They're able to get everything that they need. The triple kill, finally, for Fun Carnage, and he's the person you need to kill before anything starts. This is what Kled can do because he has that effective uh, massive health bar because you can knock him off his mount and get that health right back. You can essentially say he has double that health bar. He is a true tank whilst also having a huge amount of damage. It works so odd, but he is probably the most effective damage tank. 
other than Cho'Gath. Honestly, you're not wrong, and this is, I think, why Kled needs to be appreciated a little bit more. Yeah, I and mean, we already saw how dominating bad matchups. Yeah, this is true. It, it was very odd that they picked the Shen into the Kled when they could have easily picked the Fiora. Not or quite the sure. Or the Renekton, or anything that could really punish the Kled. The Kled is something that you want to use after you've seen what the matchup is. Yeah. More than anything, because when he's picked up into a tank, he dominates. He takes over the game. Do you remember when Triple Doran's ring was the thing in top lane? Yes. That was the only match time where Kled had bad matchups in top lane. Because he didn't do brilliantly into Galio, and Gragas won that matchup. That was about it. Yep. Other than that, it was literally just Yura, Jace, Renekton. And that's pretty much and which also case. Which also counters Kled as well. Kled, I, I'd say Kled only really does well into pure tanks when they're not able to go for that Triple Doran during start, because they don't have that early damage, they're not able to punish him, and he's able to punish them. Even so, the Triple Doran Drinks start being nerfed so hard just basically means he uh, destroys most of the enemy top laners yep. that you play against now. Exactly. So, I think it's a great pickup for Talzun. I think a little bit greedy when they chose it, but still. And now we see how effective it can be, especially when you pair it up with the Twitch, because the Twitch is able to get the flanks while Calzone is now the focus. He's the guy in the middle of everybody that everyone has to deal with. Otherwise, he's going to shred through everyone's health bars without taking much damage himself. Now Chaos trying to find on Connors, but oh! Yeah, they might be able to get it, but the Ace in the Hole was just in time trying to teleport play on the Fun Carnage. He's taking a lot of poke, and that's a shutdown. Logic, they're only going to on to Logic himself. Here comes the Fox. Pineapple finally showing up, but they have everyone else on the other side. That's going to be a flash in with a knock punting him back into the team, using the Petrifying Gate, but they're not going to get anything against Calzone in the back line, shredding apart those AD carries, the carries that they need. That's going to be Pineapple Nick falling down to Rick with Edwin soon to follow. Giving that over to Steel Ball is going to be an ace for Silver. They're going to be able to go, go on to this bear and try to see if they can win the game. And now with a huge advantage the, the Baron would give them, they might be able to end it and they might be able to break open the enemy base. There's still a few towers in the way that they have the bot side opened up. And I think that's what's going to be important because there's nothing that Chaos can do. He can't even try to go face check this because he'll be bursted down. And this is what we were talking about with Calzone, the flank potential he has. When he's able to get onto these carries, there's not really much that gold can do to stop him. Now he's got that Infinity Edge, it makes it that much easier to burst people if, for fun carnage. It makes it that much harder to get rid of him because he's critting people. And when you've got people standing on top of each other, but the Runin's Hurricane bolts of the ultimate hit the same people as the normal basic attack, and they all start stacking on top of each other. That's where the true damage of the Twitch ult comes in. That's where the highest potential is. And it shreds people to pieces. And this is where we see Fun Carnage just playing so aggressive, wanting to see if he can get more picks. Thankfully for Logic, he had the rest of his team, so Fun Carnage is being smart about that, saying, eh, I don't really want to engage onto oh, that. He doesn't have boots, though. That is very interesting. Going instead for that Luden's Echo. Going to try to get a little bit more damage. Honestly, Barbara doesn't really need it, does she? Well, she could be going for the... Uh... Luden's Echo as sort of a pseudo magic penetration build where you just want to get that little extra burst of magic damage for the squishies. It's going to help her a little bit, but at the same time, it feels so uh, aggressive to go for it just purely because it's a movement speed based item. Yeah, but she does have the shield that gives her a little bit of a speed up if she opts to use that on herself, I yeah, guess. The, the, it feels waste, the, a waste the stack goes on top of each other. Yeah, I I kind of agree with you. It is kind of uh, a hat on a hat. The hat on a hat. <laughs> hey, that's my thing. But now I'm trying to see if they can pick off Fun Carnage. If Gold is able to get a good pick on a Fun Carnage. They do have ways back into this game, but from what we saw just five minutes ago, the gold being relatively even has exploded and ballooned up to almost 7,000 in favor of Silver. It's just been that Baron that has started it off, and Kled is using it to push in the bot side during all of this. So if they just continue to bait them into staying in this mid to top side, then Kled's going to get a nice chunk of damage off of this bot tower. I think what they want is to get a good oh. play coming in from Rix, but look at the shred from Fun Carnage. Alistar, even using the Unbreakable Will, and having to use that Fate Skull just to keep him alive. He might actually fall through the poison, he does! Logic going to be able to pick get picked off in at the end and the tower is going to be falling i don't see much that gold can do to stop this 
logic, one of the major forms of disengage is gone now. We see the ultimate from Callista also gone. It means that there's a lot less safety. And uh, the Baron buff minions are starting to push into this Nexus Tower now. I think this has to be the call from Gold. They have to make a play. Here comes the righteous play from Mr. Yami. I'm still going to try and see if he can pick off on Carnage, but he's blown up before he's able to do oh. it. Going down, giving the 10th kill to Twitch. There's not much that Gold can do. Silver, they're going to look to see if they can end the game off of this, even with the ace in the hole, just to poke him down a little bit. The flash coming in from Rick's not going to connect a lot of chaos. And jumping forward is Clutch, trying to see if he can get anything, but dismounted from Skrull. Rick getting the heal to keep him all alive. They have the wrench stack, trying to see if they can get anything, but Logic just spawned back up and dies again. There's nothing that they can do. This is going to be a tied one for one between the two teams. Silver somehow able to pull it back with that Twitch jungle. And the surprise pocket pick of Twitch Jungle works out wonders all the way from the level 2 cheese to every single engage. He just wasn't punished for it. That's going to be the 11, 3, and 6 Twitch picking up the game. That is absolutely absurd to see that happen. But crazy game to witness. Interesting to see that a Twitch Jungle can actually succeed similar to how an Ezreal Jungle can. I wonder if we'll see it more tonight, but we're going to throw it over to a quick little break as we get ready for our next game. So guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. 